Today I'll be using a roster consisting of the greatest players in NFL history. 32 all-time teams representing each NFL franchise put onto one bracket, and by the end of this video we'll have only one team left standing. To get seeding for our bracket, I simulated one season with our all-time teams and used the AFC and NFC standings respectively. The Chiefs and 49ers are our one seeds, while the Dolphins and Bucks are bringing up the rear. Interesting. Also interesting, the Niners apparently decided to start Steve Young over Joe Montana as Young won our all-time league MVP. P, Otto Graham won AFC Offensive Player of the Year for the Browns. And like I said, using those standings, we were able to get 1 through 16 seeds in the NFC on the left side of the bracket, the AFC on the right. But let's start with the NFC, that top left region. I mean, all these matchups are going to be bangers because these rosters are loaded. But yeah, the one seeded 49ers look so good. I see, uh, yeah, the Panthers, Lions, a little feline battle coming up. And we'll start with either a predictable blowout or an insane upset. The first seeded 49ers. I mean, Jerry Rice, Charles Haley, Joe Montana. I believe they're going to start Steve Young in this game. They have so many 99s. And because Tom Brady is on the all-time Patriots team, uh, yeah, the Bucks don't have a strong starting quarterback. I mean, they have a pretty good amount of 99s. They could be competitive. And indeed, the Bucks were actually competitive as a 16 seed. A late fourth quarter, Mike Evans' touchdown catch tied the game for a quick moment. But yeah, emphasis on quick moment as Joe Montana under center and the 49ers were would march back down, score a final touchdown, and we roll into an eight versus nine seed matchup. Uh, the eight seeded Falcons, Mike Vick, the only 99 on this roster. They kind of outperformed in that season, Sim. I mean, especially when you consider the Bears were lower. They were a nine seed. They probably finished with the same record in the season, Sim. Look at all these 90. Nah, the Bears are secretly a one seed. Come on. Wow, I guess I got to show some respect for the Falcons. One first down and this game is over. I mean, it might be over anyways, but if the Bears vaunted defense can hold here, Mike Vick, what are you going to do? He's not scrambling. He's go. What are you doing, Michael? Oh my God. Oh no, no. Okay. I thought he had a man. That was a wild play, dude. They've got to go about I don't know, 50, 60 yards here. They have no timeouts. I'm pretty sure this game is over, but I thought they were going to beat the Falcons. No doubt. So we might as well give them the benefit of the doubt. And that's going to be game. Wow. An epic QB battle here. McMahon 352 and three, but Vic outplayed him 361 and three. We moved to the aforementioned feline battle. The five seated Detroit Lions led by Megatron, Barry Sanders, some of the best uh, skill position players you could ask for. But they are favored definitely over the Panthers who on paper, okay, that is also a lot of really good skill position players. Barry Sanders would get the scoring in this game underway for the Lions. But as I feared, the Panthers were a fake 12 seed bro as in the third quarter, a big Steve Smith touchdown would turn the tide of this game completely. And indeed, Cam Newton and the Panthers wasn't dominant, but they get out of here with a nice victory. And the final matchup in this region of our NFC side of the bracket, the fourth seeded Giants with a full page of 99s. Yeah, there you go. And the G-Men will be taking on the 13 seeded Seattle Seahawks. Um, I might be a bit biased here, but these Seahawks look really, really good. That is so much 99 power. And I'm beginning to think the season sim didn't mean much, dude. The Seahawks in a great position to win this game, Eli Manning. That's a dot, though. They just need a field goal, too. We flip sides of the field because uh, that's just how we do in Madden. Peyton, oh my gosh, carving up the Legion of Boom. What is this? The, okay, so the Giants burn their final timeout. It's only third and seven, though. They could have run another play. 11 seconds left. They're going for the field goal. This is a 50-something yarder. Oh, but they made it. Okay, it's so hard to tell watching this. I guess fair enough. Good decision. I don't Here's know. the deal, though. In OT, if you're watching the game on the broadcast, Cam, whatever, I was just doing, it always glitches out, so we're just gonna have to skip through plays here, and we're gonna have to find ourselves a winner. Otherwise, like I said, the game get to gl gl glitches out. Who won? Oh, no. I was only half paying attention. I was trying to explain what I was doing, and the Giants won. Okay, then. Eli Manning outplayed 99 overall Russell Wilson. I guess fair enough, brother. And just the one pure upset in that region of our NFC bracket, the Panthers, a 12 seed advancing. The Giants, it was anticlimactic, but they did hold on in OT. Huh? And from there, we'll move to the other half of our NFC matchups. The Cardinals being a two seed is throwing me off, I will admit. And the Cowboys being an underdog? That's kind of crazy, but we'll see. New Orleans led by Drew Brees and Reggie Bush against Marshall Falk, Eric Dickerson, and the Rams. And the six-seeded Saints uh, steamrolled the 11-seed Rams. 296 and three tutties for Brees in the win. An endless
endless supply of 99s on Green Bay. Wow, the Eagles only three of them on their roster and another favorite dominated as the Packers rolled Philly by a couple touchdowns. Aaron Rodgers got the start over Favre and put up 392 and three. I was surprised to see the Vikings as the higher seed than the Cowboys like I mentioned and Dallas would lead this game late. Third down, Fran Tarkenton under center. Gotta make something happen here. Oh, that's a dot. That's a dot. And they've tied this game up now. Despite that clutch Vikings drive though, Dallas would immediately march back downfield and a last second field goal secured them an upset W. And finally, we get to the Cardinals. That surprising two seed I mentioned earlier, in my opinion, Washington, very solid on paper as a 15 seed, but Arizona's down to their last leg. This is insane. Oh my gosh, fourth down. Kyler's got some space. He's okay. He's going to run. He's got the first down. No way. No, he just fumbled. He just, he got rocked. Kyler, you got to slide my guy. A huge upset on paper. The two seed is down. Although I will mention again, Washington had a pretty phenomenal roster. So not that surprising. And in fact, that means two nice upsets in this portion of our NFC bracket. And they'll be facing each other. The Cowboys, the Commanders, New Orleans, Green Bay. We kind of saw that coming. But altogether, we finished the round of 32, at least with regards to the NFC. We've got now eight of them teams remaining. Some great matchups still to come. But let's head over to the AFC, where the Chiefs were the one seed. The Dolphins, the only franchise with a perfect season in NFL history, is a 16 seed. I don't get that one, but uh, yeah, lots of good matchups here. Along with San Francisco in the NFC, the Chiefs were the best team in our all-time league simulation, and it's pretty easy to see why. I'll say again, though, the Dolphins being so bad, I mean, their roster should be good. I know they haven't had a lot of recent success, and maybe that's why they're so bad. Miami would actually hold the lead in this game at two separate occasions in the first half, but a late Tony Gonzalez touchdown catch from Mahomes swung the tide just before halftime, and the Chiefs would never look back. Not a great sign they surrendered uh, 28 points to Miami, but they did take a big W. And Mahomes threw for 327 yards and four TDs. He's doing just fine. Our eight versus nine seed matchup in the AFC includes the Raiders, uh, another very historic franchise here with a whole lot of 99s. Wow. And they're taking on the nine seeded Jets, who, uh, yeah, not quite the 99 star power. I also think uh, they might be lacking a bit at QB with all due respect to the legend Joe Namath. He's only a 94. But oh my gosh, I guess who needs a QB? Who needs a 99 overall QB when you are the J-E-T-S Jets Jets. Wow, man, that's dominant. Let me show some ultimate respect to the Buffalo Bills organization all time. No, that's OJ Simpson. Okay, never mind. Um, yeah, OJ and the Bills going up against uh, the Browns. Uh, speaking of upstanding organizations, hey, where's uh, Deshaun Watson? A anyways, not looking good for the underdog Browns here. They would need an incredible, unpredictable uh, defensive stop here, then march down and score with only one timeout. And well, hold on. If the Bills fail to punch it in here on third and goal, we could have some last second. Oh my. And they're throwing it. And that was so easy. What were the Browns doing? That's game. The Browns were within striking distance, but unfortunately, OJ Simpson murdered them on the ground. But unfortunately, OJ Simpson dominated them on the ground all game. Yeah. And finally, our four versus 13 matchup in the AFC, the Texans. Yo, their roster looks loaded. Surprisingly, I can't lie. And they performed very well. Oh, hey, there's Deshaun. The Broncos also very, very strong, though, a surprising 13 seed. I'm going to keep saying that because uh, every roster looks great. But who comes out on top here? The Houston Texans do. And wow, it was really never at risk. This was a thoroughly dominating performance. The Broncos were honestly lucky to be within 10. That Texans receiving duo DeAndre Hopkins, 7 for 125 and Andre Johnson, 6 for 76 and a touchdown. Mm. And there you have it. Just the uh, one true upset from that region of the AFC bracket. The Jets only a 9 seed advancing. Anyway, some good matchups will be on board. But before we get to any of that, we got to get through the final region with our round of 32 from the AFC. I, I can't believe the Patriots are a 7 seed. That's really sticking out to me. Not gonna lie. Also sticking out to me, the strength of the all-time Chargers roster. All Though the Ravens, the legendary Ravens are an 11 seed. And my suspicion was correct as Baltimore simply dominated wire to wire. 399 overall running backs on the Titans, but a much deeper roster for the Colts. But Tennessee showed why they were the higher seed, I guess. They held on and survived for a low scoring two point win. Barely 200 yards and no TDs for Peyton. Wild. Like I mentioned earlier, the Pats being a seven seed is crazy. They are loaded. 99 Brady and not a whole lot of 99 talent on the Bengals. But this game, however, was 
in a word, crazy. Neither team could get a single stop offensively. Chad Johnson for the Bengals had a pair of touchdowns. Gronk was a monster. But Cincinnati had the last laugh, 52-42. Are you serious? The Pats walked off losers. And finally, arguably the NFL's most historic franchise, Pittsburgh. They are loaded. Meanwhile, the Jacksonville Jaguars, not so much. Yeah, no. Unsurprisingly, the Steelers did handle business, an easy 15-point win. And I can't lie to you all, I am still shaking at the fact Cincinnati upset the Patriots. The Ravens also an upset from this region, although less surprising if we're being honest. And with that, we are down to the Sweet 16 on both sides of our brackets, both conferences. In the NFC, we have three double-digit seeds advancing, so let's get to them first. Up first, though, two single seeds going at it. The number one seeded San Francisco 49ers. I wouldn't even hate to see the Falcons take them down. It would be cool. Oh my gosh, and an upset is on the menu. It could happen here, people. Okay, still three timeouts left for the Falcons. That's a big completion across the middle for a big first down. They are letting Michael Vick cook. Is he going to the... Oh, he overthrew again. Why doesn't Mike tuck and run? Let's go. Let's go. There he goes. Right on cue. Oh, he's got space. Yo, he, but okay, safe. Mike Vick could have challenged that 49ers linebacker in uh, single coverage, but he played it safe, didn't turn it over. That's a tie game now, which is unfortunate because the game goes to OT. And once again, I can't risk it glitching out by watching it. So we're going to skip through this way. We're going to try and follow what happens here. The Falcons get a touchdown and an extra point. I'm paying attention this time. That is huge. If they get any type of a stop here, this is game over. We couldn't watch the exact play, but Michael Vick and the Falcons have done it. They got the stop in OT. And I can't lie to you all. Michael Vick might be too OP in this roster. 425 yards, two TDs. Okay. But that was a massive upset. I am buzzing. I need more, baby. The Panthers are a 12 seed. Can they upset the New York Giants? Oh my gosh. I can't even make this epic. I can't. All I can do is answer the question I just posed, which is yes, they can. And it wasn't even close. Cam well outplayed Eli Manning, 308 and three. That's MVP Cam. Back to back upsets on the NFC side of our bracket, both coming from the NFC South, ironically enough. There will be no massive upset in this matchup because the Saints and Packers are both heavyweights. But technically, technically a Saints win would be an upset. They're a six seed. The Packers are a three seed. Anyways, uh, this game has been a battle, but the Packers are on the verge of putting it away. Oh, in fact, they are. I didn't even notice. It's first and goal. The Saints have one timeout. I thought this was going to be epic. I'll take the L here. I thought we'd jump into this game and see a game deciding either touchdown or sack, a, a stop, something like that, but not meant to be. Instead, the Packers advance as a clear heavyweight in the NFC. An absolute superstar performance from Aaron Rodgers, of course. And that brings us to our final Sweet 16 NFC matchup with two double-digit seed teams, but both Washington and Dallas, they should not be a 10 and a 15 seed. I mean, come on. As I figured would happen happened between these two NFC East rivals. We had a tight game with the teams trading blows in the first half before an eventual fourth quarter turn from the Cowboys. A Jason Witten TD pass from Roger Staubach and Herschel Walker putting the nail in the coffin with a short run. That was all she wrote. And there goes the Washington Commanders Cinderella run. Darn. I mean, I thought we might have a 15 seed marching all the way down doing some damage that not meant to be. And in reverse order of what we just saw, yeah, the Cowboys advance. Cowboys Packers, so much history there. I'm just noticing it now. And up top, a great NFC South rep uh, matchup here. Falcons, Panthers, both big upsets. And we've got our NFC Elite 8 matchup set. Now let's get to it with the AFC. We got some games to grind through, boys. Let's go. The first seeded AFC Chiefs were back up with an on-paper advantage over the Jets. And this game got real ugly real quick as Casey opened up a 24-0 lead. And it only got worse from there. Five versus four seed with the Texans against the Bills. And guess what? We have had another emphatic blowout. This time the Bills putting in work. Deshaun Watson really went out sad. Wow. Titans, Ravens. I'm still not sure how Baltimore is an 11 seed. And indeed they pushed Tennessee to the brink, but a game winning touchdown run from Earl Campbell was the difference. A Steelers win in this matchup would mean a near perfect top four seed advancing region. The Bengals though were on the verge of disrupting that. They had a great shot, but the Steelers defense held strong with under a minute left. And just like that, we have a two and three seed advantage advancing in the AFC. The Titans versus the Steelers. Tennessee still kind of feels like an underdog to me. And up top in the AFC, I did say near perfect bracket. The Texans, the four seed did lose, but we've got a one, two, and five seed. Sorry, that means we've got a one, two, three, and five seed advancing in the AFC. Not many surprises over there, but we've got four Elite Eight matchups to get through, and then we'll already be at our final four. I can't wait. No, seriously, I can't wait. Let's get it done. And we will start in the NFC with our Elite Eight, an eight seeded Falcons team getting home field advantage over the 12-seeded Panthers. Either way, this is a chaos team advancing.
dancing. This game was an absolute battle with superstar performances all over the place. Both Cam Newton and Michael Vick were doing everything for their teams. Christian McCaffrey found the end zone twice. Julio Jones was getting involved, but the Falcons are on the verge of holding on. They're up a touchdown just over two minutes left. If the Falcons manage to bend but not break, they will be in business. McCaffrey, wow. I said wow at that play because that was literally the first time all game the Falcons have stopped Christian McCaffrey. I will show you the stats later. Huge third down. Oh my gosh, Newton was going to Christian McCaffrey. McCaffrey, why? He's not a receiver. I'm not lying. Christian McCaffrey's numbers this game, I can't wait to show you. Just insane, but going to him on third down like he's a wide receiver. I don't know about that, boss. Fourth down, this is the game. This is the game, and Cam goes down. Definitely a tough L to swallow for Cam and the Panthers, but wow. That was truly an insane performance all over the place. Christian McCaffrey had over 100 yards on the ground and receiving. He had two touchdown catches, but in a loss. Like I mentioned a moment ago, arguably the two most historic franchises in NFL history. They're going to battle to see who will eventually battle Michael Vick and the Falcons. And I'm not going to lie, I thought this game was over quickly when the Packers got out to a 21-0 lead in the first half. But of course, I was mistaken as the Cowboys have battled back. Their backs are up against the wall, though, under three minutes left. Dallas is driving and doing a great job. They're preserving their timeouts. They still have all three first down from just outside the red zone. Staubach dropping back and he's finally going to run. He's got so much space. From the moment I jumped into this game till now, this has just been a clinic. They aren't running it in. It doesn't matter. Just automatic stall back. Unfortunately, Aaron Rodgers couldn't make any magic happen to end regulation. So let's go in OT. We got to do it this way. The Packers are marching and they've scored a touchdown, the full seven. This is really stressful watching it this way. Second at the third and five, fourth and five. This could be the game. Oh my word, stall back is clutch. Looks like it was Herschel Walker with the, and they score a touchdown. Herschel Walker on the day. Okay, it's tied. This is insane. I hate watching it this way. I am very extra stressed. Looked like, uh, looks like the Packers are marching. They're marching fourth and one. Oh, that's game because they scored. Okay, that's right. That's right. That's how OT works. I know. All they needed was a field goal in that position. Fair enough. Green Bay is advancing. Roger Staubach was amazing for the Cowboys, but once again, Aaron Rodgers gets the last laugh over Dallas. To the AFC Elite Eight matchups we go. I'm sure I just gave some Cowboy fans a little PTSD. Why not the Bills fans now as they're up against the first seeded Chiefs? Oh my. And don't worry, Buffalo Bills fans. I'm not showing you much here because there's no, there's no no need to worry about PTSD or anything like that. Nah, this was... <laughs> This was out of pocket. 45-10? Are you serious? Jim Kelly with 344 yards and five TDs. They don't even need Josh Allen out here to out -duel Pat Mahomes. Wow. I'm honestly shook from that performance from Buffalo. We have one final Elite Eight matchup. It's from the AFC Pittsburgh versus Tennessee. This is a two versus three seed. Wow. And I can't lie. I, I can't lie. This is a second straight, genuinely surprising result. I know the Titans are good. They were a three seed in the season, Sim. But still, wh what am I seeing? A result much closer to a blowout than it was a tight game. Tennessee, shout out, man. Wow. And the crazy thing is their triumvirate of Hall of Fame caliber running back, they weren't even that great, bro. Earl Campbell, 71 yards? It was all Warren Moon, 335 through the air, four TDs, yeah. And one more time in reverse order of what we just saw, the Titans win their region. Up top, the Bills upset the Chiefs to win their region. The Packers, the three seed, went all the way and won their region. And finally, the Falcons, yeah, an eight seed. That is very surprising, winning their region. All together, we don't have a single one or two seed into our final four. We have just three matchups remaining. Let's get it going. And we will start in the NFC. Just a reminder, the three seeded Packers into the final four led by Aaron Rodgers. Oh yeah, Charles Woodson, Reggie White. They they are loaded. Brett Favre on the bench. And another look at the eight seed Falcons. Only 199. It's Michael Vick. He has been amazing. Other than that, you got Julio, Algie Crumpler. I mean, it's a solid team, I guess. But only one can remain out of the NFC. Do the Falcons continue their Cinderella run to a title? Well, it sure looks promising. Four minutes left. The Falcons have a touchdown lead. We'll see how the clock gets managed here. Sometimes when you watch these games, Madden, yeah, they be glitching. Things happen. So the Packers, they need to score a touchdown either way on this possession. Yo, that juke from... Oh, he, he fumbled. What? No way. That was a sick juke, but then Aaron Jones put it on the ground. I can't believe that fumble, man. What a clutch play by the defense. And yeah, they'll take a field goal 
and probably win. Anyways, the Falcons with an upset. But at the end of the day, surrendering 17 points to Green Bay, that's a massive dub and Atlanta takes it. And with that, we'll move to the AFC where we revisit the three-seeded Titans led by, I mean, they just have all these running backs. It's basically just Earl Campbell who gets action. 98 Warren Moon has balled out. And they're taking on the Bills who have steamrolled their opponents from the five seed. Of course, OJ Simpson. Jim Kelly at quarterback has been real good. Andre Reid. Yeah, they have legends. I have zero read on how this matchup from the AFC is going to play out. Maybe the Titans with home field advantage have the upper hand. We'll find out. Indeed, the Titans did have an upper hand early. It was a battle of legendary QBs. Jim Kelly, Warren Moon, both balling out of control in the fourth. Earl Campbell and OJ Simpson traded touchdowns. And that late OJ Simpson TD has kept the Bills alive. They are now ooh, getting stuffed near the goal line. But after getting the OJ touchdown, they did force a stop, giving themselves a chance, but they got to march the entire length of the field, get a two-point conversion. That's a good start. Buffalo only has two timeouts that could come in uh, come in to be uh, important here. So what I'm trying to say is, Jim Kelly, what are you doing? My man, Jim Kelly, thought he was Michael Vick or something. He immediately went for the tuck and run. That was wild. Now it's fourth and nine. Game on the line. Kelly forcing it in no Diggs can't come down with it yo it was kind of there though but that incompletion would be the game 38 30 Tennessee after a truly grueling battle with 32 all-time teams we have just two left standing and it's the Falcons and Titans not a soul would have predicted that no seriously Titans Falcons I don't know if I can think of a less like historic franchise battle but like good for them I guess at the end of the day it does not matter if I think these franchises are historic enough because because they are both here, both have balled out, and we can only have one left standing. This was a high-scoring game with Michael Vick and the Falcons setting the pace at every turn, but the Tennessee Titans matching them at basically every turn. Third and seven. I think it's been Tennessee's defense if we went back and looked at the scores of these games. I think their defense has been the X factor. You know, Warren Moon's been cool. They've got... Vick. Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. It was out of bounds. It's all fun and games, though, to get the clutch stop. Warren Moon and the Titans offense need a touchdown. They are down five. Oh, my God. Gosh, they are going for it all on the first play. That could have been picked off. This is definitely four down territories, but they complete it regardless. A fresh set of downs after the two minute warning for Moon and the Titans. Again, he's going for a chunk play and he's gone. This it. is the first time I'm officially scared for the Falcons. At no point here did I think, uh, I guess I should have thought that they might lose. Anyways, I haven't really thought about it. That's Earl Campbell. Oh no. Oh, Earl just gashed him. Uh, Earl, that's a first down. Although one could argue they probably should have just let Tennessee score because this allows them to burn a little bit more clock. They probably could use more than that. Warren Moon could literally walk into the end zone. Instead, he finds Earl Campbell, who does just that. Wow. Tennessee indeed completed their two-point conversion, and the Falcons are ready down to second and 10 with 35 seconds left. Michael Vick, you've been magic this video. Even though they've surrendered 35 points, I think the Titans D might be the secret MVP of this final Super Bowl game. Setting up their touchdown drive with a big stop now. Can they seal it? Yes, indeed. And they force a fumble just just for good measure. Oh my word. Right on cue. What a performance from Tennessee's defense. Again, I'll say letting up 35 points is an ideal, but when it mattered most, that defense from Tennessee just locked down. Michael Vick and the Falcons came so close, but unfortunately so far away as the Tennessee Titans are our final all-time team left standing. Wow, I did not see that coming. I'm blown away. I hope you were all blown away as well too, or you know, just enjoyed this video video moderately. Either way, I hope you subscribe and please check out when I put the NFL back in their prime. That video was insane, including an IRL prediction that Madden nailed.